Hi, I'm David Gross with Condi Systems, and I'm back to share a little bit of information with you. Many people have written me and requested for a video that is really an introduction to sublimation. And we have a lot of videos, obviously, and, and, and they're, they're very helpful, but there's not a sort of a, a starting video, and so I thought I'd try to do one. Sublimation um, is a word, of course, that means to move from the solid state to the gas state without moving through the, the uh, liquid state. Good example of sublimation is dry ice. You know, you, it just turns from a solid to a gas. The sublimation we're talking about at Condi Systems here is basically some naturally occurring dyes that were first uh, discovered in probably the 1930s in Europe. And when you heat these dyes up, they turn into a gas and they will bond with certain types of materials. At that time, all they had was some cellulose kind of materials. Um, and then shortly after they were discovered, polyester was invented. And so these dyes are attracted to what I call oil-loving molecules. And um, for instance, cotton is a water-loving molecule, so it won't sublimate. And so if it's a man-made kind of product, which we have lots of coatings now that we use on our products, and polyester fabrics, then you can sublimate to it. Well, these dyes were very successful um, in the 1940s, 50s, and so forth. They found many applications. Almost all the applications were, were of a textile kind of nature. And as the computer revolution came about, um, certainly in the 1980s, uh, people said, well, can, is there any way we can run these kinds of sublimation dyes which, by the way, are also called dispersed dyes, can we run them in a digital printer so that we could, we could do things on demand, we could use our computer and print, and, and folks started using the dyes on, on ribbons that were used with thermal wax printers. And then, of course, inkjet hit, and the dyes were, were put into a water formula, and they were printed onto paper, like this, and then using a heat press, uh, we could sublimate them to products that are sublimatable. So in the big picture of sublimation, um, we, we need three things essentially. Well, we need a printer, okay. We need um, a computer to print with, of course. And then we need a heat press. Well, at the printer, what we're looking for is we're looking for a printer that will do a good job handling the sublimation ink. And since sublimation inks are heat activated, we need to use a printer that doesn't heat the ink up. Most printers like HP, Canon, Lexmark, they heat the ink up by pushing it out of the printhead with what's called thermal drop on demand. Essentially, they boil the drop of ink out. Well, other printers like Epson printers use piezo technology and they vibrate the ink out. Well, the printers I have in front of me today are two Ricoh printers. This is the Ricoh E3300 and this is the Ricoh GX7000. And they're perfect for sublimation for, for a bunch of reasons. And, and there's some articles I've written. You can read all about how, how well I feel about these printers. But these printers are perfect because they're piezo printers. And so we're going to load special inks in here. And, and the inks that we run are called Sublajet R inks. And they're formulated for the Ricos. And they're more of a gel ink, meaning sort of a concentrated ink, as opposed to the kind of just liquidy inks that you see in the Epson printers. Um, so they go for, they give us a little bit better mileage on these. We run them in these printers, and then we print onto paper. Now, this paper is, is officially called release paper. It's not really transfer paper. It's, it's, it's not super expensive or anything like that. It's just paper that will handle the heat of sublimation, okay? It will release the dyes when we heat them. And it maintains minimal dot gain. In other words, when you drop the ink on there, it doesn't spread out too much. And so over the 18 years that we've done this, we, we've had papers formulated for us that do just a great job. And each printer, you should always ask what paper is appropriate for that printer because some papers are just not, not the right printer, not the right paper for that. And so we take our printer, we run the sublimation inks, we print on the correct side of the paper, and then we take it to our heat press. Now at the heat press, what we're trying to do is, is we want to marry the two together. So for instance, this is a ceramic tile, and this tile has been coated for sublimation. 
meaning, meaning we put a, 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 a clear polyester coating on there. And so some products are naturally sublimating, for instance, uh, polyester fabric. Other products like ceramics, and ceramic is really baked clay um, with a glass coating on top. That's why they call it glazed. We put our polyester coating on top of this, and so you need to use a sublimated tile, something that has that poly, polyurethane on top of it. And then what we're going to do is we marry our, our transfer with the tile, and we cook it for a certain amount of time, and then we take it out and it's finished. So it's a very simple process to do, and videos like this and other videos provide you the exact recipe of how to do this. But ultimately, it's, it's a whole lot like cooking. Um, it's, it's fairly easy. You just need to have the right recipe, and then you can do it consistently over and over. Now, in the sublimation world, we sell little printers like these, and we also sell big printers. And today, I was going to show you a shirt um, that, that Condi did for some charity work that I do for schools. And this is a, a shirt that we did for St. Vincent's School here in Mobile and they're involved in a robotics competition and we did the shirt on our big equipment so we have bigger heat presses and bigger printers and so sublimation is a scalable technology from little printers like this to bigger printers like this until you get to wide format printers and then you you have big presses as well so if you'll go search our, our video archives you'll see where we're doing shirts like this and it shows you actually how to do it so sublimation is a very flexible technology in that you can do thousands of items. It's a, it's a fascinating technology because you can achieve such bright and vivid colors. Lots of substrates. It's, it's turned into a reliable technology due to printers like this and the, the advances in the, the ink formulations that run very well through the printers. And so today, sublimation is probably the very best kept secret in, in many industries like the photo gift industries, certainly in the uh, textile industries. I'm amazed at how much sublimation you see at Walmart now in ladies' garments. So sublimation is, is absolutely has gone viral over the last probably two years and it's something that, that is fascinating technology. It's high value, meaning the products um, are, are low cost, but when you actually sell them, um, they're, they're quite valuable and can achieve high profit margins. Plus, you can achieve a, a lot of unique stuff um, in sublimation. So, again, I hope this has been a great video for you to introduce you to sublimation. Please let me know your questions. As always, uh, I can be reached at dgross at condi.com.